This is the PRS SC Mark Holcomb signature guitar. Mark Holcomb is of course the guitarist from a very small jazz band called Periphery, and if you don't know what their music sounds like, here's an evolution of their jazz playing over the years. Now, as a jazz guitarist myself, I have never seen this before, but this guitar came tuned to something called C drop, I believe. And the neck pickup is also really high output, which is also kind of strange. But anyway, I was able to do a little bit of tweaking on my settings and get a really nice jazz tone. All right, all right, I'll stop playing around. Here you go. Welcome back to The Experiment, the series where I explore a single gear category in extreme detail over an extended period of time. I guess this video is part of both the PRS SE experiment and the metal experiment. This guitar is nothing like anything else in the PRS SE line, and it's also extremely unique when compared to other metal guitars, so we have a lot to talk about. Let's get started with the headstock. Now, starting from the headstock, just like PRS's other signature guitars, the only place you see the artist's name is on the trust rod cover, which I really like. If for example, you hate the idea of having a Mark Holcomb signature guitar, you change the trash rod cover out for a couple of pennies and then it becomes your signature guitar. Now this is one of PRS's more expensive SC guitars and it's also obviously designed for modern music. And because of that, I really wish they included locking tuners on this instrument instead of their standard non-locking tuners. Of course, these tuners are very high quality. They turn really well and all of that, but me personally, I wish they were locking considering the price and the modern design of the instrument. We do get a black synthetic nut that was cut perfectly out of the factory, so that's always great. And again, tuning stability on this guitar has been phenomenal. Now, as we move to the neck and the specs, this is where this guitar is really unique in the PRS SE line, but also in all of the other modern metal design guitars. <laughs> First thing you're going to notice is that we have a maple satin neck and a lot of the other PRS SE guitars have a gloss neck. However, the maple is painted black and to my hands, a painted neck that is satin does feel very different than a standard maple satin neck. And I think that that helps this guitar stand out a little bit when compared to other metal guitars. That's not a huge deal, but again, it does feel a little bit different, which I really do like. Another huge distinguishing feature about this guitar is that it has a 20 inch radius. Now, a lot of metal guitars have a flatter fretboard radius, like 16, but very few have a 20 inch radius. And I honestly believe that most guitars should have 16 or 20. So this is one of the few guitars that you can buy that has a 20 inch radius. I think that contributes so much to your ability to play fast on this instrument and I really, really love that. We also have a 25.5 inch scale length, which is going to be great for when you want to down tune a little bit. And we also have PRS's wide, thin neck profile. And this is somewhere that we need to spend a little bit more time again. So if you've played any PRS guitar, you know that PRS tends to make necks that are a bit more chunky, which is great for all of us chunky neck lovers. And even though this neck is labeled as a wide thin, of course there is no universal way of categorizing guitar necks. And this neck is thinner than PRS's other necks, but it does feel thicker than your standard modern metal style guitar. Now this is not going to be the most scientific way of doing this measurement, but I'm going to hopefully give you an idea of how thick or thin this neck is compared to other similar guitars. So this is the PRS SC Santana and it has the PRS wide fat profile. So I'm going to press down on the strings and measure where the dot inlay is at the third fret. 1.01 inch. And of course, this is the Mark Holcomb guitar with the PRS wide thin profile, 0.96 inch. So definitely a lot thinner than the wide fat profile. Now I'm showing this guitar as a point of reference because Schechter and Ibanez of course make a lot of modern guitars. So if you're used to playing thin necks by their standards, this is what you can expect. 0.87 inch. So a lot thinner 
than the Mark Holcomb. So for anyone who's been watching the channel for any period of time, you know that I always complain that all of these big companies make the exact same boring, really thin C or modern C profile. I'm really, really happy that the Mark Holcomb has a neck shape and feel that is unique when compared to other brands. Now, I almost forgot to mention this because honestly, all these PRS guitars are spoiling me, but of course the fretwork is perfect. The leveling is perfect. There's no sharp fret edges or tooling marks. And one really cool thing about this guitar is that it has a white binding around the edge. So again, you don't see a lot of metal guitars with binding, but this has it. It feels comfortable and it looks great. Of course, this guitar has the standard PRS carving on the front of the guitar, which really helps with high fret access. But something else that's important to note is that this guitar joins with the body around the 22nd fret. And we don't often think about this, but where the guitar neck joins the body, that's going to play a major factor in determining how the guitar feels for the entire length of the neck. And since the neck joins so high, this area from fret 12 all the way up to maybe fret 19 or so, this still feels like a regular neck. You don't feel like you're starting to get in contact with the body like you might on a different guitar that joins a little bit higher. So the high fret axis on this guitar is also amazing. So if you're someone who really likes a modern guitar and you really like the idea of modern specs, but you're kind of tired of having a super thin modern neck, the Mark Holcomb is perfect for you because it is slightly thicker, but we still have that 20 inch radius and we still have that satin back. So I think that this guitar doesn't just fill a spot in the PRS line, it fills a spot in the entire metal modern guitar line. Now, when we move to the body, you of course see this very beautiful burst with this flame maple top. And to be honest, when I look at pictures of this guitar online, I don't really like the way it looks, but Having it in person and seeing the burst in person, I think looks way better than the pictures and in camera. So definitely go look at it in person before purchasing because I think you'll like it more then. Oh yeah. No one saw that. Wow, that's really pretty. Ooh. And when you compare this body to other modern metal guitars, again, we have a unique feature. I've mentioned this in other videos, but a lot of modern guitars have this very extreme forearm bevel. Here is the Schechter guitar that I showed earlier, and you can probably see up here that it has a very extreme forearm bevel. And here's another example. We have my Abbasi Concepts ME6 guitar, and you'll notice it has a very extreme forearm bevel. Now, having an extreme forearm bevel isn't good or bad. It's just a spec preference, and it just so happens that this is the preference for, I guess, a lot of companies nowadays when it comes to modern guitars. The Mark Holcomb does have a shallow violin carve, so there is a lot of comfort here, but you're not going to be slipping off of the guitar because of the extreme forearm bevel. And I wanna make something very clear. I'm not saying that this forearm bevel, since it's less extreme, is objectively better. I'm just saying that there are not a lot of other guitars for this genre that don't have that extreme forearm contour, and that bevel has bothered me in the past. Now, you may not believe this, but I'm selling this guitar for exactly one reason, and that is the forearm bevel. When I try to sit and play, my arm constantly slides off. So if you're like me and you just want a normal feeling guitar up here, but you still want a modern feel, modern pickups, again, this body might be for you. Now, when we move to the rest of the guitar, we of course have PRS's standard bridge. And I really love using this bridge because it's super easy to intonate. You probably know that periphery likes to use a lot of drop tunings. So having the screw adjustments right there on the back, changing it very easily, that's been great. And I've also noticed when trying to drop tune other guitars that you can run out of space in terms of the intonation. For example, some periphery songs have the low E string tuned to A and that requires a very different intonation than if it were tuned to standard E. As you can see, since I was tuned to A, I have that screw all the way pulled back. So I know for a fact, because I tried it, tuning anywhere from the E string tuned to A all the way to the E string tuned in E, you'll be able to intonate it just fine. In terms of the controls, we have master volume, master tone. On the tone knob, we have a push-pull to split both pickups. And then we have a very simple three-way switch, does everything you would expect it to do. And we have Mark Holcomb's latest signature, Seymour Duncan pickups. This guitar's pickups are actually really nice for clean tones as well. Mm -hmm. 
they are definitely high output, so you might have to, you know, bring the input volume or the gain down on your amp. But the character of the pickups themselves is really, really pretty. And they also split really, really well. And yes, of course, the pickups sound great with gain, you know. I don't wanna sit here all day and just do this for you. The pickups sound good for gainy stuff. Let's see how it sounds with some gainy stuff with big chords, since Perfree likes to do that as well. So I know I joked around in the intro by saying that Periphery is a jazz band and that this is a jazz guitar, but the truth of the matter is you don't need an arch top guitar with flat wound strings to play jazz and you don't need a super pointy guitar with a thin neck to play metal. And if you're someone who likes to explore a lot of different genres of music, well then you should definitely pick up my course link below because I designed it in a way to help any guitarist, no matter what genre they care about, improve on the instrument. But after you get the course, you might wanna check out this guitar. I just wanna reiterate a few things. A lot of modern metal guitars have a very, very thin neck, 16 inch radius, very extreme forearm bevel, a super thin body. And if you want that guitar, this is not the guitar. Ibanez, Schechter, Mayones, they all make that guitar and they make it in so many different varieties, you can get it there. If you're someone who wants something a little bit different, for me, that means the neck is a little bit thicker, we have a 20 inch radius, which in my opinion is better than a 16 inch radius. We have a body that is comfortable, but not too extreme in terms of the forearm. If you want a unique feeling modern metal guitar, you really can't get that anywhere besides this one. And for me, at least right now in my life, this is essentially the spec that I've always wanted on a standard guitar, except we have a more modern metal design. So. This is one of my favorite PRS SE guitars. I may have to change out the tuners to locking because that's just my preference and I do wish PRS did that. But apart from that, this guitar is essentially flawless. I absolutely love it. 